Okay, today we're going to be talking about polynomial functions, and some of this is review from a previous section, but our book kind of throws this in also in this section. And also, you're going to need your calculator, so if you don't have your calculator, you want to make sure you go and grab that. Okay, polynomial function in one variable is defined by this function. That's really what we're used to doing. Okay, last chapter we did quadratics. So a quadratic would be something like x squared minus 3x plus 2. I was only in one variable. Okay, so state the degree and leading coefficient of each polynomial. This is not a polynomial in one variable. Explain why. So our degree, you look at which term has the highest degree. So our degree is 3, which makes it a cubic polynomial. Um, and then our terms, there's three terms that makes it a trinomial. And then our leading coefficient. Look at that term where you picked your highest degree from. That leading coefficient is 7. And yes, we are in one variable. Okay, B. So you have to look and see which term has the highest degree. The degree of the polynomial... Technically, the degree of that term is 3, because I would add those exponents, and technically the term there would also be 3. So our degree is 3. Our leading coefficient, let's go with the one where it's just the a cubed. So our leading coefficient is 6, and this is not in one variable because of the a b squared term. Okay, our next piece, just doing some algebra with this. So this first piece, what you're going to do is you're going to plug in 2x minus 1 everywhere you see an m in your polynomial. So I have 2 m which is 2x minus 1 squared plus m, which is 2x minus 1 minus 1. Now the minus 3b of x minus 3 times your function evaluated at x, which is just basically 2x squared plus x minus 1. Now it's just a matter of simplifying. So I have 2 times when I FOIL that out. Now make sure you FOIL it out. It's not just 4x squared plus 1. It's 4x squared twice the product of those, so 4x plus 1 plus 2x minus 1 minus 1. I'm going to distribute that 3 on through, or the negative 3. Now I'm going to distribute the 2 through, okay, now combine your like terms, anything with an x squared in it, 8x squared minus 6x, that's going to be a 2x squared. And I like to cross those off just so I know I've taken care of them. Um, anything with an x term. Negative 8x plus 2. That's a negative 6. Negative 6 minus 3. That's going to be a negative 9x. Okay, I've used those, so I'm going to cross those off. Now, lastly, 1 minus 1 is 0. Minus 1, negative 1, plus 3 is a plus 2. 
And I realized, I just realized I made a mistake when I distributed my two through there, I needed a two there. So actually that becomes, that is not a two at the very end, that is a three at the end. Okay, you wanna make sure you have this chart in your notes. And yes, this chart is very important. It talks about end behavior, meaning what happens as X gets really, really small and as X gets really, really big. Even functions, any polynomial where your highest degree is even behaves the same way. Now, you guys already know what Y equals X squared looks like. So think about what that function looks like when your degree is even and your leading coefficient is positive. You have a parabola that opens up. So what happens to the y's as x gets really, really, really big, both in terms of the x's and in terms of the negative x's? For both of those, you're going to positive infinity. Your, your graph is ending up. You can think about it like that. Your graph is ending up. But you guys know that when you have an even degree and your leading coefficient is negative, your parabola is going to open down, which means that as you go to negative and positive infinity, as the x's, what's happening is I get really, really small with your x's, what's happening is I get really, really big with your x's, both of those you're going to negative infinity. Okay, now when your degree is odd and your leading coefficient is positive, you guys really don't, haven't really studied y equals x cubed, but we know y equals x. y equals x is a straight line. So as I go to negative infinity, as I go down here to negative infinity, negative infinity, our function goes to negative infinity. As you go to positive infinity, x's get really, really big your y's also get really, really big. Now, when your degree is odd and your leading coefficient is negative, I think of y equals negative x. That's a negative sloping line. So what happens as I go this direction on my x's? As I go that direction on my x's, my y's get really, really big. As I go the opposite direction, as my x's get really, really big, my y's are going negative. So we have that. And that's an important chart for you guys to understand. Okay, an example involving that. Identify whether the function graph has an even or odd degree. So that's going to help us in finding our end behavior. Positive or negative leading coefficient, again, helping us find our end behavior and then state the end behavior. Okay, so our degree, even or odd, does it resemble a line, either one of those two, or does it resemble a parabola? When you're looking at what happens for really, really big x's, so I think about it like connecting the endpoints that you can see on there. It looks like that. So what does that kind of look like? That looks like a line, so therefore my degree is odd. My leading coefficient, is that a positive sloping line or a negative sloping line? That's a negative sloping line, so therefore our leading coefficient is negative. Now the end behavior, you need to know this notation. So you're looking for what happens to y. f of x does something as x goes to negative infinity and as x goes to positive infinity. So that's going to be the same notation. You just need to fill in positive or negative infinity here. So as x goes to negative infinity, as x goes to negative infinity, 
our graph is ending up. That means I'm going to positive infinity. Our graph is ending down. Ending down as I go to positive infinity, that's why the y's are going to negative infinity. Okay, the next example. Let's identify our degree, the leading coefficient, and then our n behavior. Oh, on the last example, I forgot to state the number of zeros. We'll do that on this one. So degree, does it look like a parabola where we both end up or down or where we end opposite ways? We both end up, so that's going to make it an even. Our leading coefficient, since we open up, kind of looks like a parabola opening up, that's positive. The end behavior, again, remember you're filling in. What happens to y as x goes to negative infinity? What's happening to y as x goes to positive infinity? Well, we end up both ways. So in both ways, I'm going to positive infinity. I didn't state our number of zeros. Number of zeros. Remember, zeros, a fancy name for x-intercepts. So how many times does that graph hit the x-axis? One, two, three, four. I have four zeros, okay? So that's going to tell me a lot, and you actually go into this a lot more when you go, take pre-calculus next year. Okay, there are your two lesson questions. Please make sure those are submitted on time. Actually, I apologize. There's three lesson questions. Please make sure those are submitted on time.